It's been more than three decades since Laurie Skreslet became the first Canadian to climb Mount Everest, but in the intervening, intervening years, he's never forgotten the people and the place that were a big part of that life-changing experience. That's why tonight Laurie is co-hosting an event to help raise awareness and money for people in earthquake-ravaged Nepal. This morning, Laurie has brought along John Oldring. John was actually on Mount Everest when the recent quake Hit this all. There's been uh, there's been two big quakes in Nepal. A bunch of aftershocks all within the last month or so. John, what was it like on Everest when the ground started to shake? Yeah, we were at a very, our team was at a very precarious spot on the mountain at the time. We were near the top of the Kumba icefall, and uh, for us, you know, the first observations we made were massive amounts of ice and snow coming at us. Sure. Uh, we didn't even realize it was a quake. We obviously we felt lots of violence. We felt lots of motion. We just thought it was a result of all the ice that was coming at us. Uh, uh, it wasn't until we got made it up to Camp One that we actually found out that we were standing at the top of the Kumba Ice Fall at a 7.9 quake hit. Wow! Yeah, and you guys just thought the rumbling and stuff was from the snow slide and the ice and the exactly. Yeah, okay. And it all happens so fast, right? Yeah. It's just it's very noisy. It's very loud, and then there's a huge backdraft of wind that just sheds. Terror up your spine sure. is what it does. Uh, we were a very fortunate team to actually have walked out of that ice field, uh, uh, given where we were at and what was happening. Yeah, and, and, and getting back to Canada must have been an ordeal in itself, just because of the way the country was hit. Yes, yes, for sure. Uh, we ended up spending a couple of nights at Camp One, uh, yeah. listening to the aftershocks and, and continued avalanches, uh, then back to base camp. We ended up spending about five days there before we made our way back to Lukla, Kathmandu. Uh, the airport had been closed to commercial traffic until uh, uh, the second of May, and we were able mm -hmm. to. I was able to fly back home to Canada gratefully on the fourth of May. On the fourth of May, um, Laurie, you've talked uh, a lot about your experience in climbing Everest, but you focus a lot of attention on the people of Nepal. Now, why is that? Well, from the moment I first visited the area in 1981, I was touched by the kindness, consideration, their dedication to being of service of the people that were there. And it touched me from the, the very first time I ever visited Nepal. And many of us, myself included, and Andrew Brash, who's co-hosting mm -hmm. the event, we owe a lot of our success back here in North America and our public profile to the assistance we got when we were over there. And Sir Edmund Hillary, set a great example by constantly trying to do something for the people back in the Kumbu Himal, the area around mm -hmm. Everest. So when the earthquake hit, of course, the, this is the right thing to do. And we put it together as quickly as we could because we wanted to take advantage of the government's offer to double any donations that yeah. we put together. So it's really just to try to show that some of us remember and care about the people that are over there. Yeah, no That's kidding. why we're doing this this evening. And, and the money raised tonight, um, ha has it been earmarked specifically on how it's going to help people? It or? has. It's going directly to the Sir Edmund Hillary Foundation, okay. which has people on the ground and has for over, over 30 years been uh, channeling money there to help build schools and hospitals. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be there helping them rebuild their homes in that mountainous area where the damages were so severe and where the second earthquake hit. Yeah. Interesting enough, that foundation is headquartered in Toronto, here in Canada. Really? I didn't know that. Okay. Um, details about the fundraiser, I can share them with you. The Victims of Earthquake in Nepal fundraising events at Hillhurst Sunnyside, the Community Center, uh, 1325th Ave, Northwest. Tonight starts at 6 o'clock. Um, and when people show up, Lori, you're going to be speaking. Um, That's right. I'll yeah. have a number of ever speakers yeah. speaking. Andrew Brash, myself, and yeah. Carlos Bueller is going to speak. And then the main speaker is going to be John here. <laughs> and we've got members of the Nepali community. They're going to be there doing some uh, cultural dances. There'll be food. There's yeah. an open bar. It's meant just to be a social evening. Sure. And there's a, a silent auction with items ranging from high-end art objects and to just the kind of gear you're going to need when yeah. you go in the mountains. When you go. There you go. Good and it's stuff. open to everyone. Well, good luck tonight, guys. Thank you. Good luck. I Thanks hope you so raise much. lots of money. It certainly is needed on the other side of the world right now. Uh, we're going to check in with Andrew Schultz right now, find out the forecast. Hey, Andrew.